Hey everyone, today I'm out here to interview my friend Drew Skip, freelance illustrator, father, and pen maker. <laughs> he hates it when I say he's a pen maker. <laughs> anyway, the interview is on his government project, which is a comic book called Singapore 2050. Yes. That's the new table Drew Skip has made for himself. He cut the wood himself as well. And this table, it's quite big, it makes the house look quite small. Those are all these artworks, art projects. I bought her this gouache, gouache box. <laughs> oh, okay. This is a sketchbook that Drew Scoop has made for her. This is some um, war art by Ollie and it's happy because she made this on the day that she didn't have to go to school so it's the happiest day of her life. <laughs> Alright let's check out Drew Scape's workspace. I think I may have featured his workspace or his office before a few years ago. You shifted your computer monitor. I remember yes. it used to be there. Yes. So, so I made this one like the natural media drawing space and then this will be the digital space. We were throwing away oh. a desk that had two drawers. Then I oh. thought the drawer looks in good condition. Oh. <laughs> then we this found some wine crates that somebody threw away. So I put the drawer in the wine crate and it, oh. it worked quite well too as an easel. Oh, I didn't, real I didn't realize that that's actually a drawer. Yeah, so the good thing about it is that like um, there's this, you know, the drawer front part. Yeah. So it acts as a catchment when you put like a pencil drops and it just hangs, stays there. Oh. But if you put your iPad, it'll stay here too. Oh, this is good. So this is the digital comic that Drewscape has created for the government. Which branch of the government, by the way? National Library. Oh, okay. National Library. I will put a link to where you can read this in the video description below. So this comic book is actually designed for mobile screens, for phones. So this is how the comic looks on the iPad. When I first read the comic, I was quite intrigued by the Oops. mixed media. No need, uh, no need to scroll so fast. <laughs> yeah, I was quite intrigued by the mixed media use which is why I wanted to interview Drew Skip on how he created this comic. And this looks like a lot of work because there are a lot of pages. Yeah, so they, the National Library, I think, wanted to st uh, set up this website called Singapore Bicentennial oh. to celebrate the 500 years of Singapore's Mm -hmm. story oh, yeah, okay. from even before Sanila Utama oh. from the very early so so they hired they, they got a, a few uh, authors and artists to come up with different stories uh, in different forms so, so it can be a like a prose or a poem or this one mine is a comic, comic book. so they got so every artist had to choose a different timeline to work on and uh, I chose the future <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> because good the future you don't have to do too much historical research as in like it, I, you don't have to do research on how people dress at that time how yeah, and you don't have to like do that. fact check yeah, yeah and yeah. also i like science sci-fi so i thought i just oh, use sci-fi that's a good idea first, yeah. smart, first smart idea yeah yeah i didn't want it to be just about oh this is new technology you know the the usual sci-fi route is this is new technology that's like wow this this is you can do this you can do that so it had to be related to, relatable to Singapore and uh, so me and the editor were, were always discussing, the editor from Ethos Books mm. and he's, he, was very, he was very good uh, so he helped me with the ideas about well, we, we kind of settled on the idea about uh, embracing, embracing change mm. like how the, the, the newer generation will uh, like, like, I think like most newer generation right we're more open to embracing change but the older generation they are more resistant. they play it more safe yeah they are more resistant to change uh, you can see it's a mix of collages some things are cut and paste from 
This looks like the bandit, is it? No, it's actually from a newspaper. Oh. <laughs> it's like some IKEA catalog or something. Oh, I, I cut weird textures out. Uh, yeah, especially like you know some weird weird textures you can get from from other paper magazine. Yeah. Paper sources. Other than drawing it, sometimes it's a lot faster. It has a different feel to it. Oh. Yeah. Then this is the first one. The, the, the first part usually is the sometimes the hardest part because you don't really know how what, whatever you do here will follow the rest. Then I tried this one. Then I was trying to get rid of the blue lines. Then it's like oh, shucks, they can't can't so, get rid of the blue lines. So this page is actually <laughs> the draft page, is it? No, actually, I finally used this. Then I I just I just uh. I did touch up to get rid of the blue lines. Then I decided, oh. okay, then yeah. for the rest, I cannot use this page. I need to redraw it. Oh, so I, okay. I so I did as I light box and oh. then I trace it and then I draw it. So I continue oh, here. Oh, okay. Wait, I, let me ask you. Yeah. So this is like mistake. I notice you use red lines on the right side and black lines on the left side. Is there a reason? <laughs> yeah. Um. It's all about contrast. So the light, I think the. When I paint, then the light is coming. I see the lights coming from here. So on this side, it'll be red because it's a like light, a lighter tone, and then I put black so that because it's, it's a the shadow, shadow side. the shadow side. So it's a darker tone. The lines were drawn with color pencil. Yeah. And the background. The background is with poster uh, color. Yeah, gouache, po gouache, mix of gouache and poster color. What's the difference between gouache and poster color? Gouache is more expensive, poster color is cheaper. Oh. But since I'm going to scan, since I put everything digital, it doesn't really matter. So the fi the important thing is the final outcome. Oh. So this is my gouache because it's like, like very soft and creamy. Uh. Ah, see, it's all mold inside. Oh, <laughs> Let me get a closer look. Wow, check out how much more is inside this. Yeah, so let's get rid of the more. <laughs> let's get rid of the mold. Poster color. So Priya says you mix a mi mixture of uh, Dettol and water. It's a uh, disinfectant. Oh, so to get and rid of the mold, you just spray some Dettol inside. So it's a Dettol and water inside here, then I just spray it inside here and then... You will kill the mold. Yeah, then... Uh, but Oh, see, that's what I did for all these. These are all hairy inside at one time. Oh. So now that we have removed the uh, mold from the bottle, <laughs> it looks like this. But the thing with mold is once it infects your paint, it will always be there. So this bottle will still have mold in a few months' time. I'm yeah. very sure. So anyway, you see, like if I use it, then... Like so, this is this is how it looks like on paper. It's oh. like it's creamy. Oh, it can, so the it can cover. It, can, it has some covering quality, so you can cover over pain. things. So um, yeah, so it's very easy to use. So so supposing I go out a bit, then I can the next one I can just cover over certain things. Oh, because it's opaque. Yeah, if you put the next layer, it can it can mix. I mean, so you can you can wet it and then it becomes ac activated it's still again. Still reactivated. Okay. Yeah. Why are there two different versions? Yeah, this one I was trying, then I realized oh, I didn't like the red wall. Then I tried to cover it, and it's like, oh, it's too troublesome just painting a red. I just want to draw a new one. Redraw again. Yeah, I was okay. trying to make it very simple and, you know, not overly complicated. So it's watercolor, gouache, poster color. Yeah, no watercolor. Oh, no watercolor. Yeah, it's just poster color, color pencils, and mechanical pencil. Oh. So why do you choose not to use watercolor this time? Um, well, because poster color can do the same thing as watercolor, but poster color felt superior for doing this comic because post watercolor will lighten a few shades lighter when it dries, mm -hmm. but poster color when I put a blue when it dries it pretty much stays this blue, oh. so I can better gauge the colors. I know what's what I'm gonna get. Okay, this is the part where I know you added the clothes digitally. Yeah, so you can see that this one, I tried, it's a, like it was, a, it was a trial and error while I'm doing the comic, because I know that I wanted the clothes to feel more special. By more sci-fi. Uh, like like more sci-fi, right, because they're special clothes. Then I thought, okay, maybe I can do a collage effect and mm. I'll, I'll draw with pen and mm. I'll just paste it. Then I felt like it still looked too natural. Oh. <laughs> it still feel like indie. Uh, too natural, it needed to feel more digital, it more high tech. It feels like it's made of cloth. Yeah, yeah. So oh. I decided, okay, I'm going to just don't draw the clothes. Mm -hmm. 
and add them and just on. add them in Photoshop. So this is the frame from earlier, and the uh, patterns were added on with Photoshop. Let me show you the clothes that Grandma was wearing. So all this digitally added on with Photoshop and looks very cool, very fun. What I really like about this comic is the combination of texture and the clean lines. It works really well. This mixed media look is very refreshing. This is most of the work. Then once I... Um, what I do is I, I take a photo of it using your old camera remember mm. I bought the camera from yeah. you <laughs> I take a photo from it and then I then it's on the com then I put it on the computer and then I just adjust the colouring that's, oh. that's about it the, I try yeah. to combine a few things so the, there's, there's also a bit of collage like there's, there's like pattern paper cut out paper cutouts yeah paper cutouts oh. to add um, because it gives a sort of a shadow and highlight around it Oh, it's a different okay. feel. The correct pace for me was supposed to be one day, one page, or one day, two pages. But usually some days it doesn't, I don't so meet that deadline. So some days it will be, you take more time. Yeah, sometimes one page can be like two days or three days. Wow. Because I'm, I'm juggling other work at the same time. Oh, this whole page looks like it's drawn digitally. No, actually this is done with markers. Oh, markers. Yeah, but the colors were added like, on. Like these kind of markers. So this is also, this uh, page is also a combination of traditional and digital. Yeah, like the inside parts is, is I natural. noticed some differences. The lines there, they are red, but here they are yellow. Yeah. I How just, do you do that? Well, I just made everything black in, in the computer, and then I just colorized oh, the black. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Just, yeah, I just Photoshop. Okay. Thing. So what are the things that you do digitally for this comic? You added the digital for the clothing colors. for anything that is like really super high tech. Then I try to add digital. Like you see, the cloth, the clothing is is digital, and the shadows are more angular too. Oh, okay. Because I wanted to get uh, and of course the dialogue. Yeah. The speech bubbles. But the shadows, the shadows really make a big difference because sometimes um, there's not much contrast. Mm. So when by adding the shadows, it allows the things to stand out. Looks At the like time, I went to a Peranakan restaurant, so then I started, yeah, this looks like so. it's very difficult to draw. <laughs> food, actually, food is food looks difficult, right? But the main thing is actually the highlights, adding the white dots. But and uh, using using poster color, white is opaque, so you can you just add dots and then it looks like something is shining oh, and oily okay i noticed for this comic you did not use a lot of lines all these are actually just painted so the rule i was trying to do is try to do everything without lines but i only put lines where it's necessary uh, where yeah where, where it's where it's necessary <laughs> you can't really see it. where you want a bit more details or contrast yeah when you want more detail and contrast you add the lines but other than that if the color already like the here and here it has contrast already then there's no need to put a line a line will be redundant okay because in real life there's no such thing as lines and then the, this one scene where it's a playground in this present time is actually the playground downstairs outside my window this this playground was this run on location no i took photos and then I then I put the photos beside and then I just use yes. urban sketching <laughs> techniques to oh, draw it. Okay. Like contour drawing and oh. then I paint it. So supposing I finished painting this, then mm -hmm. I put it in here. Like here. Oh. And then okay. I put it here. So put it here, it opens up. So everything's a flat lighting inside. Oh. So now it everything is flat inside and you can take a photo yeah like that of the art. exactly like that yes oh yeah it does look good and there's so i shoot it in raw format this is a very useful gadget yeah that's my new toy so this this, the... this border is needed because they it's a specific phone size phone dimensions oh okay yeah so and that's the speech bubbles but I already, already marked out where the speech bubbles go so I, in the computer I just kind of draw them loosely in Photoshop using just the lasso tool Oh, what resolution are these files in? Let's see... It's um, 315 by 27 cm Oh, okay 300 dpi okay. So if they want to print it as a book, you can but it's, it's going to be a, a small book It's a like very that. vertical book. book Yeah 
Mm. Um, and, and you see the frames are actually made for digital, as in the, the text is actually quite big. So that when you view it small, you can you can oh, read it without okay. without needing to yeah, yeah, pinch that's true. And expand. You have to keep the text huge. Surprisingly, this one there was like hardly any changes at all. Oh, okay. There was just some minor changes from the editor. Oh, and there like okay. some typo. Oh. So to me, when I submitted the work, it was it was good to go already. Yeah, so. choosing a sci-fi story set in the future is a very smart move. <laughs> for me, I guess. Yeah. For me, at least. Because they cannot say anything, anything wrong. Oh, they can. There, there are certain things that they oh. some restrictions. Like, like it had to um, represents a few races. I think so. I think in the background, oh. maybe I have to include some race thing some and multicultural aspect. Yeah, and it has to be positive. It cannot be like a negative thing about mm. Singapore. Oh. Like it uh, cannot be like a dark, uh, dark morbid future of Singapore. City. Sin City type. Yeah. But anyway, that's not my style. I mean, usually I like something more yeah, yeah, light-hearted. Yeah. Yeah, I like the light-hearted and comedic feel of this. Are this the Durant Intense... Ink Tense Pencils? Ink Tense Pencils, yeah. Oh, because they're really soft and the color is quite vibrant. Yeah. And so for the blacks, most of the blacks I use the this one. What's that? Um, why I used it is because it's... Ink Black. Because it also is because it's, it comes out as matte. When I when I draw it, so it doesn't really reflect in the light. You know, sometimes if you put in a light box, it, it, the, the light shining on top, it will just have a oh, it okay, just reflects. Yeah. Then um, it, instead of a black line, you have a shiny so, um, line. Graphite pencil will reflect light. Yeah, then you have to shine the light in a in a different angle. But this one was matte, so everything kind of helped. It's not shiny, oh. so you can't use really waxy, really waxy pencils. Oh, okay. So now we are going to check out the playground that Drewscape has drawn in this comic and it's brought some pages to compare. So this is the playground feature in the comic. Yeah, so when they come out of the portal doors, it's through this it's here. Oh. The portal door is, is here and then it's here, see? So this is the oh. playground. Let's compare side like, by side. It's, it's not like the most beautiful playground. Oh, it's the same chair. See, there's two chairs here. This is that that chair, this is this chair. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so this this one is this one, this tree. Oh. In the comment, I mentioned some people like Auntie Joyce and everything. It's like, it's actually a real my neighbor. So my oh. neighbor, neighbor, Auntie Joyce, who lives there. Oh. And there are some uncles that sit there in the morning. I see it's the other bench there. Oh. So I just mentioned them in the comic. So those are real, real people. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's all for this interview. If you have any questions regarding freelance illustration using gouache, poster colors, you can post them in the comment section. I'll get Drewscape to answer each one of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye. You can play quite well. <laughs> no, I can't play very well. Yeah. That's much better than me. Okay, thanks.